1985, so it's been about 30 years of science. Um, continually modifying it for whatever the scientists dream up um, as far as what they need, new capabilities or, or whatnot. Um, the airplane is is old school airplane in many ways. One, it's the aluminum construction, so we can uh, we can we can put a hole in it and and um, put a doubler around it so that we can fly safely. Keep the pressurized cabin uh, pressurized well. Um, like I said, uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, Zenith looking forwards. Here's one right here. We're not using it for this mission. Uh, there's one right where you walked in that looks straight up on the center line. A bunch of Nader ports. And then, of course, the windows. Um, some of them you can tell with like the black frame. Those are uh, optical windows uh, for better um, optics. Um, but also for our in situ measurements, which is what, not what we're doing on this mission, uh, but in situ measurements when we stick probes out the windows that can measure you know, uh, gas constituents that are brought into the airplane, analyzed in the airplane, and then exhausted out of the airplane. Um, um, so lots of, lots of ways we can modify it. As uh, has been pointed out, this, this campaign we have five instruments on. Some campaigns, I know before I was on the project, they had a campaign with 25 different science teams on the airplane, and we fill up the airplane quite a bit. Um, again, fairly old school. This is a, uh, we have uh, two mission directors sit here. They're, they are the uh, communication link between the, the mission scientists, which is uh, Rich or me when he was here, uh, to the pilots um, as they adjust the, the flight path uh, for the day as the convective systems or whatever are moving around. Um, there's, there's SATCOM. Uh, we have both Iridium and MRSAT um, satellite communications. So with the, the center down at Hayes, they can be watching the weather. They can be giving us guidance as to, hey, where we should fly, as they're also giving guidance to the P3 and the, and the, uh, the Wyoming King Air as well. With the radar, except we use uh, short pulses of laser light instead of uh, radio frequency. So what, what this instrument does is it measures water vapor and aerosol profiles throughout the atmosphere. And as, we, as the aircraft moves, we get essentially a curtain uh, image of the water vapor and aerosol distributions. And so how this instrument works is it uses a, a powerful laser <clears throat> which emits a short pulse of energy. That light is split, it goes up and down which allows us to look into the upper atmosphere and uh, all the way down to the surface. That, as that light propagates, it inter interacts with the atmosphere, mo molecules, aerosols, water vapor. And some of that light gets scattered back to uh, these telescopes. Um, there's one that looks up and there's one that looks down. That light that scatters back we collect with the detector and it goes into our electronics. And uh, the time of flight to that scattering target essentially tells us where uh, the water vapor and aerosol and cloud uh, particles are in the atmosphere. And so what we do is we essentially send two wavelengths of light out uh, sequentially in a short period of time. One wavelength uh, is located on a water vapor absorption feature and the other one is located away from the water vapor absorption feature. And so this measurement in principle is very simple. We essentially take the ratio of those two signals that come back. One is attenuated due to water vapor, one is not attenuated due to water vapor. And that allows us essentially to take the ratio of those two signals and, and measure a range result profile of water vapor to the surface. And so that's important because uh, as, as you heard Dave talk about, uh, water vapor is the, the major driver for these uh, severe storms and understanding their temporal and uh, spatial variability is very important. And oftentimes, uh, a lot of the researchers on both the aircraft and the ground rely on the images that we provide in real time from uh, these LiDAR instruments to guide the uh, mission itself. So we provide real-time images of uh, snapshots of the aerosol and water vapor profiles. And if we can see interesting features, that allows the scientists to target those areas and go down and either sample in situ um, with, with uh, instruments that actually measure right at the aircraft or um, move ground assets to go sample uh, area, areas of intensive observation. So uh, this instrument was originally designed for the ER-2, which is a high altitude aircraft. Uh, it was supposed to be a, a technology demonstrator for uh, essentially a, a satellite instrument that would measure water vapor from space. Since then, it's been retrofitted to fly on the DC-8. So we've added the upward looking channel, which allows us to look deep into the uh, um, upper troposphere and lower stratosphere, where small changes of water vapor can really affect our climate. So this really gives us a full profile of water vapor and aerosols from, from the uh, surface all the way up to the uh, upper atmosphere. And this is 
really one of the only instruments in the world that has that capability.